Hello and thank you so much for joining me for some Saturday Night Crafting. I'm so excited to do this project with you tonight. I've been playing around with it all week and I love the results. We are going to use embossing powder and we are going to do some multi-colored kind of spotlight um, with the embossing powder. So these are some of the samples here of what we're going to create and it is so easy to do and really satisfying. This one here is my absolute favorite by the way. Oh, I love this one too. <laughs> I really enjoy this technique and I can't wait to share it with you. You don't need many supplies for this technique but you do need embossing powder and you do need translucent embossing powder. So if you have a look on your jar of embossing powder, it should either have a T or say translucent on it or it will have an O for opaque or say opaque on it. Now translucent is obviously see-through and clear, opaque is solid. So we want to use translucent ones for today's technique. Now whatever stamps you've got in your collection, they will work. I'll share with you how you can do it with a large background stamp versus how you can do it with a smaller stamp, um, but they are the exact same process. Now I'm going to ask you to do as I say and not as I do. So I am stamping and inking up my stamp, stamping it down. I'm using a stamp platform just so I can do it twice over and get a really good dark impression. I am now drying my ink with my heat tool. It's actually so, so, so much better if you cover your whole entire image in clear embossing powder and heat set that. It works much better, it dries a lot faster, it's not as messy and you can get this done really quickly if you use a translucent um, clear embossing powder. Now I'm using this tape which is from scrapbook.com. It is basically like post-it note tape and I am just creating a frame around my card using the edge of my card as sort of my place to put my tape so I get a nice even layer around the card. You can also use post-it notes if that's all you've got or you could just put a piece of paper along the edge and kind of cover it up. Now. Because I didn't heat set this with some clear embossing powder over it, I can't take my embossing pad and rub it on the top of that because it will pick up that black ink even though it's dry. It will still pick it up because I haven't left it for like a few days to dry. So I'm coming in with a sponge and inking up that whole section. This is why it's great if you actually emboss it with, with some clear embossing powder first because then you can just squish your ink pad right down on there. Now the first way I attempted to do this technique was to tip some of my embossing powder onto my panel and then tip it off so I could save as much embossing powder as I could. This doesn't work for this technique. I'm afraid you're going to have to take the hit and lose a bit of your embossing powder because it's just not going to work. When you tip it off, it covers the whole panel as you can see here and it didn't work. So I've got this little tiny spoon. Um, this You can get one of these spoons from absolutely everywhere. I'll try and link one down below for you uh, so you could find one if you really want one of these tiny spoons. They're very handy for this kind of technique. All I'm doing is adding on a little bit of embossing powder using that spoon and I am going to sacrifice it. It's going to get dumped off at the end, but I am using the smallest amount. You'll see at the end of the video, I've done several cards and my embossing jars are still pretty much full. So you don't actually waste that much, but it is kind of what it is. In order to get this beautiful technique and these beautiful layers, you kind of have to sacrifice some of that embossing powder getting mixed up and tipped off. So this is my first one, the first one that I did, and I liked it overall, but I wasn't in love with it. It was darker than I wanted it to be, and I realized in the end it's because I put quite a concentrated amount of the powder on, and actually when you tip this powder down, when you tip your embossing powder down using a spoon, the higher you kind of lift it up, the better the effect looks. Now that I've got all that embossing powder on there, I can then do the squishing of the ink pad, but you actually don't want a second layer. I did want a second layer on this one because it was really blotchy and I didn't cover everything, I think because my sponge wasn't brilliant. So I've come in, tipped some extra on, and now I've got a really dark layer. So if you do want a dark layer, this will work for you, but I felt like this is too dark for what I was trying to achieve, but you can see here that it's translucent, you can still see through it you can still see that image, which is what we were going for in the beginning. So I do make a card out of this anyways, but this was my first ever go at sort of doing this idea I had in my head. Now here's another one where I did the same thing, but I tipped it in kind of the flower order, and that's all the embossing powder I had left over. So I inked up this piece of cardstock with my ink pad, and I'm just gonna squish it down into that powder before it gets all too mixed in, and then make the most of that excess powder. So I'm gonna heat set this and you'll see what it looks like now. It looks gorgeous. I can die cut out of this. I can make some die cut flowers out of it. I could make a little panel for the back of a card with it. There's lots I can still do. So you can use some of that excess. There isn't much left on that paper, but you could use some of it up. Now here's the panel where I um, 
intentionally placed my embossing powder to kind of highlight some of those flowers. It was quite easy and quick to do. And I love how this looks. I love that gorgeous detailing um, in those flowers. And here you can see where I've embossed the actual background. And it just went so quick and so easy to make this one. And here's my original one on the left. And you can see how much darker and clearer and crisp that background is if you emboss that image itself. So now if you've just got a single stamp, you can go ahead and use that. I wanted to block off my leaves on this stamp. And I know it looks a bit funny, but I wanted to just... Um, block those leaves because I was thinking in my head I wanted the sentiment to kind of be the leaves of the plant so I wanted to place my flower higher up on my card make the stem a bit longer and then have sort of where you would have the leaves be be where my sentiment goes that was kind of my idea in my head so I thought I would share with you if you kind of miss a spot when you're stamping um, you can always draw it in and trace it in and because I'm going to emboss it in clear ink obviously using like a gel pen isn't going to quite work it's not going to stick to where I put that black pen but you can come in with an embossing pen I have this one here from WOW and you can just trace over those lines and then add on your embossing powder straight over top and that will allow it to stick if you're that bothered about it whether it's shiny or not so I added in that extra bit of pen added on my clear embossing powder I'm going to heat set that which just takes a couple minutes and then I can go ahead and do my same technique. Now this time I thought I would switch it up so if you've got dyes in your stash or maybe a hole punch um, you can go ahead and create a cool mask. So I'm going to use Gina K's masking magic paper to do this next technique but obviously you could just use a plain piece of uh, copy paper if you want. The masking magic is great because you can lift it and reuse it and lift it and reuse it and it doesn't seem to leak through. I don't seem to get any kind of ink kind of going through that paper at all so it's quite nice, it's quite durable. So I'm just kind of marking my paper, cutting out a piece that's going to cover the whole front of my card and then you can actually see through it quite nicely and I can line up my die where I want it to go over top of my flower so that my flower is kind of my spotlight focal point. And then I can run that through the die cut machine and then I've got my mask ready to go over top of my flower. And I use this on quite a few cards so it's nice and easy to move about. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing as before because I've embossed that image. I can go ahead and take my ink pad and go straight onto my cardstock and ink it all up. You can see that the masking magic is all covered in the ink but that won't seep through so we don't have to worry about that. And I'm actually going to leave that on there while I heat set it as well just so that I don't get any transfer onto the bits that I don't want it to go onto. Now this is again one of my more intentional ones where I wanted the, the powders to go in a specific pattern. I wanted them to kind of give more of a flower look rather than a random look. And I do like this way but I like the random a lot more. So I'm just kind of filling in where I want it to go using a very small amount of powder. It does look like I'm using quite a lot here but it isn't very much. And I kind of just used my finger to manipulate the powder into all the sp spaces that I kind of missed. And then when I heat set it this is what you get in the end. So it's a bit again darker than it would be if you sort of shook the powder lightly over the top but it's the same as that one on the left, you get the more intentional one. Now this is my totally random one using less embossing powder. I felt like that dark blue kind of was very dark, so I wanted to use it very sparingly, so I just used a tiny bit of that on there. I gave it a good flick off and then heat set it, and I absolutely love how this turned out. I love the random pattern, and when you lift up that release sheet, you see that gorgeous image. Now for this one, I accidentally got some embossing powder underneath my masking magic and it like heat set and melted to my cardstock. So it's hard to see from the video, but there are little specks of embossing powder in the background. It's not crisp and white. And if you get that, it's really easy to remove. You don't have to panic. You just get yourself a sand eraser. So you can get them in almost any shop. I think I even got mine at like the grocery store. And it's just one of those erasers that has like a normal side and then a scratchy side. Um, or sometimes you can just get like a sand eraser that's just all scratchy, if that makes sense. And then we're just going to rub it over top of that embossing powder where we have it, where we don't want it, and it'll just lift it up. Now for the next one, I thought I would use this stamp set from scrapbook.com and I just did the edges and did my circle in the middle to kind of make that spotlight in the middle. So you don't actually have to have a big focal image. You can use sort of little images and just kind of dot them around your card because our focal point is going to be where we put that circle or where you put your rectangle. If you don't have dies, if you don't have any kind of shapes, you can just do that with regular paper and create your own little image in the middle. Um, your own little spotlight image. So let's turn some of these into cards. I decided to trim them down uh, any of the edges that were a bit raw or a bit 
um, off center. I trim them down and I match some of them up with black card as a background and some of them up with a holographic card as a background. And that kind of just highlights our colors a little bit more and draws the card all together. The holographic paper is amazing because it gives that kind of rainbow effect already. I've also got these stamps from Lisa Horton Crafts and they are so awesome. They have such lovely sentiments. So I just stamped a whole bunch of them out using my stamp platform. I stuck them all on together, stamped one go, and then cut them out with a pair of scissors. And to finish off my cards, I backed the sentiments with holographic paper, popped them up with some foam, and then added some little um, holographic flat back sort of sequins. They're like sequins, but they don't have a hole. Um, so I use those on the back. If I can find the link for them, I'll put them down below for you. Um, I will do my best to link everything I've used today. It should be in the description box, but I do forget things. So please do pop me a message if I forget. I've got these sort of holographic gems. They're flat back gems from Alina Crafts. And I've used those gems with a bit of liquid glue, kind of highlighting my flower a bit and drawing your eye in. And that's the end of the tutorial for today. So I hope you really enjoyed it and I hope you have a go as well. All my social media links are down below in the description box if you want to join me on my Facebook group, follow me on Instagram, um, or if you'd like to sponsor this channel in a different way, there is also a buy me a coffee option as well. So I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend and I look forward to seeing you next week. Take care. Bye.